Hey guys, my name is Mel and I just wanted to welcome you here to this video today. It's probably not the best time of day to be doing this because the lighting is here and that's not ideal. But I felt up to doing this video now so I thought we should do it now. Hello puppy. So today I'm going to talk about my symptoms of craniocervical instability and allantoaxial instability. So I have a video talking more about what craniocervical instability and allantoaxial instability is and I'll link that below and I'll also link it up here somewhere in the cards so you can have a look at that and also what the condition is, how it affects the spine but also how it affects the spinal cord, the brain stem, the nerves, the arteries, the veins and all those really important life-giving sustaining things that are found in the neck. So I really debated whether I wanted to do this video or not because it is literally a video just talking about my symptoms and listing off all the symptoms that I'm about to list. In the end I decided to go ahead with it just to try and help close the gap in diagnostic time. It really takes a lot of patients find that it is very difficult to get diagnosed and they're often misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed for many years at a time. And for me, from the time that my symptoms, these symptoms that I'm about to talk about, from the time that they became disabling and debilitating to the time where I got a definitive diagnosis that was confirmed by multiple different practitioners was seven and a half years so that's really a long time and the majority of that time like the reason why that was so long was because it wasn't until I got diagnosed with EDS which was only a couple of years ago that my doctors referred me to see a neurosurgeon in the years before that they weren't investigating what was wrong further because they said it was just existing conditions which at the time I was only diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia and POTS so they were just saying it was fibromyalgia. So I just want to raise a little bit of awareness hopefully help someone else out by sharing these symptoms and at the end I'll also share some symptoms that I don't have but some of my friends have and also a friend of mine Rachel Elizabeth has a really similar video to this discussing her symptoms we have really similar cases so my neck pain and symptoms are my most debilitating symptom out of everything that I experience and all my conditions it has the biggest impact on my quality of life out of everything and it also has the biggest impact of mine and my husband's quality of life together as a couple and if there was one thing I could fix about my health or take away it would definitely be the issues around my neck probably the most dominating and now that I look back and know more about CCI and AAI the most telltale symptom is that I just felt like I couldn't hold my neck up and it would be very very painful to hold my neck up even for a very short amount of time even if I was sitting with good posture or sitting in my wheelchair that had back and neck support on an angle to take the pressure off my neck just anytime gravity would be on me it would just be really painful to hold my neck up and that pain would just continue to increase and it was like it wasn't just painful it's like it literally feels like you can't hold your neck up like if you're holding a tin out like this for a long time you get to a point where you feel like you can't hold it anymore and it's getting more and more painful the longer you do it and that's what it feels like just sitting up even in my neck brace but less so with my neck brace then without it that's the biggest thing and of course there's so many things in our day-to-day -day life and in the tasks that we need to do in a day that involve involve gravity so involve sitting up or standing up or even not quite sitting up but being on an angle in a bed or a wheelchair or whatever that's still very painful even if I was laying on a pillow with just my bed ahead of my bed elevated to just a little bit to help with my pods that was too painful for my neck just five degrees elevation so it's very painful and at my absolute worst I found it difficult to even sit up in bed 
to eat a meal and for the most part I would lay on my side, have the food shoveled in my mouth and I would get dressed laying down. My mum would dress me, she would often bathe me as well and yeah I just mainly had to do everything laying completely flat which was pretty much doing nothing because even if I was laying in my bed with a supportive pillow looking at a screen even laying down like looking at a phone or even listening to an audiobook which I totally don't understand why but for whatever reason it would have that pain and my muscles would start getting tight and very painful from even just listening to an audiobook laying down in bed which is really strange so even like laying on my side looking at a phone was just too painful and still is too painful so I really can't do anything in my bed like reading or looking at a phone or anything like that watching tv even if I'm laying completely flat because it's just too painful and all those things are very difficult for me sitting up as well so looking down to do anything is very painful and looking at my phone gets very painful very quickly so it's not like oh it gets painful after half an hour it's literally painful after a few seconds as soon as I look down and the pain just gets worse the longer that I do it and it gets first worse very quickly and very steeply so I tried a lot of physiotherapy and it only ever aggravated things and I know now that that's because I was undiagnosed with craniosurfer instability and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and what the physio was doing was actually making it worse so even now I'm not doing any physio exercises because they make it worse but we're trying to improve and stabilize my neck a bit more and then work on doing some exercises with my brace on in the future so even when I worked really really hard and really really persistently for months with physiotherapy it only just got worse and eventually I just stopped physiotherapy. Really my own intuition was kind of saying this is only making you worse. You need to stop even though I'd kind of given it my absolutely everything and tried to trust the process and fight through the pain. It just made it worse. So I find a lot of muscle pain in my neck and it refers down into my shoulders and then goes down into my back and hips. So I have some vision changes, some symptoms that I don't have. I think I occasionally get tunnel vision, but it's only happened a few times in recent years anyway. And I don't get huge vision changes, but I will occasionally get like the colored dots or the white dots or the black dots. My vision will deteriorate throughout the day. Like I will find it hard to focus on things later in the day than earlier in the day. Sometimes if I've just been laying in bed and then for example I look up at the clock on the wall it will take my eyes a long time to focus on the clock enough to be able to see what it says and if I'm focusing from one thing to the next it will often take my eyes quite a while to focus on that thing. So another symptom I get is sore face. I often get sore all through everywhere actually my entire head gets sore I get a lot of migraine I get a lot of differences in different types of headaches so sometimes I'll have pressure headaches sometimes I'll have headaches that I don't really have a name for sometimes I'll have headaches where it feels like there's a band around my head that's being tightened sometimes my head will feel quite spongy sometimes I'll have like a sharp pain behind my eye so my headaches can really vary and then sometimes they will be full-blown migraines so I also have a lot of TMJ issues that are probably connected to the craniocervical instability so that's why I have orthotics in you've probably seen these plastic things in my teeth and I also have one kind of holds my jaw together at night so that my jaw doesn't dislocate and sublux while I'm asleep so I have improved a lot since I got those my neck improved a lot when I got those Still not enough to have anything that resembles a normal life but a lot from where I was so it has helped a lot having these but my jaw will often sublux and I'll have to clonk it back in place and one of the reasons why I soak my potato chips before I eat them is just because I can't chew them like my jaw can't chew anything that's hard and those sorts of things so I'll often get really big balls of tension behind my ears that is probably related to the TMJ and the neck probably relate together 
and my TMJ often feels stuck as well like sometimes it'll just get stuck like kind of not in the right place so the other interesting thing that I had is that I would feel like I had an ear infection and I'd have itchiness and pain in my ears and I would actually often get frequent infections but I haven't had as many frequent infections since I got my orthotic which is really interesting because before that I was just having chronic ear infections and then I got my orthotic and I stopped having chronic ear infections which is really interesting if you can hear that sound in the background that's just Amaya chewing on a ball so I would get a lot of pain another symptom is any sort of coughing laughing sneezing coughing up mucus anything like that will cause pain especially in the like the back of my neck and kind of like right at the top of my spine there and I probably haven't explained the type of pain it's like I can't explain it but I feel it there's like so many different types of pain there's the pain in the actual vertebrae and I feel that especially right up the top of my neck is where it is at the worst like where it kind of connects to the skull that's where it's absolutely the worst and then I just have pain all the way down the rest of my spine but then there's also the muscular pain the muscles get really 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 tight from trying to hold those vertebrae together when they're slipping around so much so I am going to condense this a little bit I'm not going to tell you every single one of my symptoms because this video would just be too long so I'm just going to stick to the main ones so I also have a lot of difficulty sitting on surfaces so especially soft surfaces I prefer to sit on a hard surface because if I sit on a soft surface like a couch and when I sit on it it goes down like this then my entire spine gets pulled down and that's very painful on my entire spine but it's especially painful on my neck and so there's more I don't know if it's more gravity or more pressure or whatever it is but it's so much harder to hold myself up even if I'm resting on the back of the couch so I generally don't sit on couches I find it really difficult if I'm going to my parents house or something like that to find somewhere for me to sit and we'll usually take either my mattress or my wheelchair but even in my wheelchair there's only a limited amount of time that I can actually sit in that and comfortably hold myself up so i also get a ringing in my ears and like a whooshing sound that kind of is like it sounds like a heartbeat and this is something i've actually had since i was a kid and i would often get it when i'd lay down to go to bed at night and i used to just think oh that just means it's time to go to sleep when i hear the whooshing noise so that's all i thought it was and it wasn't until i was diagnosed that i realized that that was a symptom and i also get a lot of ringing in the ears i get pain in the ears and i'm also diagnosed with mini hairs disease which is associated with bouts of bad vertigo dizziness vomiting um, nausea all that sort of thing and I think that the that's probably connected to the CCI I don't think that they're separate I could be wrong but I think that they're connected I also developed short-sightedness in my mid to late teens I often have to pop my ears like you do when you go up in the mountains and I also often feel like there's a brick in my head like it just feels heavy and sometimes it feels like a balloon that's like keeps getting blown up but it's like heavy like a brick so it feels heavy in my head but it also feels like there's something really really heavy on my head that's like pushing down on my neck so this is a really weird symptom and I often get over stimulated very easily so bright like artificial lights or bright like or loud noises or if we're like if I'm in the passenger seat I don't drive if I'm in the passenger seat at night I have to close my eyes because there's just too many lights around loud noises are particularly overly stimulating but also if there's a lot of things going on at once I can't process them very well so sometimes part of me even though I can see everything it feels like I have blinders on because I can't really comprehend what's in my peripherals and I have a very like I'm not going to say photogenic memory but I'm a very visual person so when I think back of something I see it in my mind but when I think back of it I only see this really small part of it because my brain just couldn't properly process all the bits around it so that's a really weird and interesting symptom so I often have nerve pain that runs down my arms and into my fingers my fingers will often feel tingly like I have pins and needles 
and I will occasionally get that in my legs but it's more in my arms and I will also sometimes get it in my face in my neck and down my back and I will also get this like warm feeling that runs down my legs like the side of the legs that comes from the lower back and it feels like hot water is running down or warm water is running down parts of my leg so that's more of a neurological symptom so some of my headaches worsen when I'm sitting up some of them worsen when I'm laying down like my pressure headaches get worse when I'm laying down so I have to sit up to relieve them but then I get different sort of headaches from sitting up so I have to lay down to relieve them and it kind of is this crazy game of tag another interesting thing is if I am looking at Christmas lights or something those will be blurry and I can't distinguish the individual light or pattern the whole thing will just be blurry that sound that's a kookaburra so having any sort of weight on my head or on my neck even a necklace can feel too heavy or also if I'm laying on my back in bed and I have a heat pack on my face even if it's a small one that can feel too heavy on my neck just like the slightest amount of pressure on my head can feel too heavy on my neck like if a massage therapist or something rests their hand on my head it can feel too heavy so my cognitive symptoms i have a lot of like lightheadedness dizziness i have a lot of problems with memory short term and long term so there are all these gaps in my whole life that as i said i'm a very visual person so when i remember things an image pops into my head and there's these huge gaps where it literally just black it'll just be black when I think of it or it'll just be like a black gap that I don't know anything that happened in that time frame and I'll also have short-term memory where for example I'll ask my husband the same question five times in half an hour just because I will forget what I have said to him or forget his answer sometimes I kind of feel like everything is a dream and it's not really happening so it's kind of like this weird I feel disconnected from myself and my surroundings. I often feel like the communication between my brain and my nerves is being slowed down and foggy. So sometimes I will think to do something and it will take a while for my brain to catch up, like a while longer than it should, like a few more seconds than it should. So I might think about moving my legs to walk or whatever and sometimes it can take a little bit for my legs to catch up to what my brain wants to do. I also have really poor depth perception. I run into walls frequently and I just my depth perception is really poor. I've also gotten really really clumsy. I don't use glasses. Simeon has like no touchy melly no melly touchy glasses because he doesn't want them to break because I break glasses all the time and for example I might be holding a mug and I'll be holding it and looking at it and seeing it here and then all of a sudden my hand will just give way and I'll just spill it all over myself and yeah I'm very clumsy I knock things over I drop things will trip over my own feet very very regularly at my worst I actually forgot how to write my own name not how to spell it but actually how to write it something between the communication between my brain and my hand just wasn't working very well and I retrained myself to write by just tracing over my old writing in my journals and stuff over time so my knees and elbows and things like that often give way when I'm in the middle of doing something I will always feel like my neck is not sitting properly and I'll do this you've probably seen me do that to try and like it feels like the vertebrae have slipped and then by moving my head like that it feels like it kind of wriggles it back up but then it slips straight away again so I try not to do it but subconsciously sometimes I'm just constantly going like this so interestingly enough I had a loss of reflexes so when I originally saw the doctor when I first got really sick she was trying to find reflexes in my knees by hitting me with a little mallet and she was hitting me a lot like she really tried and I ended up with bruises all over me but I couldn't get any sort of reflex response like my leg wouldn't move at all 
Um, so that was an interesting one. And then my reflexes to things are either heightened or slowed. So like I have really, really, really heightened startle response. Even small amounts of stimuli will make me startle a lot. And then other thing, I, other things I have really slow reflexes to. Also muscle weakness. This could be a number of things, but it could be contributed to by CCI. So I also get pain referring down my back, my hips, my legs, and into my calves and hamstrings. I have a lot of problems with my balance and I'm quite unsteady on my feet. And at my worst, I used to, if I stood up, I used to black out and I would be very disorientated and not quite know which way was up or which way was down. And I would often have to like sit on the floor or crawl to get from my bed to the bathroom. Pots could have had a very big impact on this. And another symptom from that time where I was at my worst was that my mum and my brother would have to alternate coming in at night and rubbing my back and patting my back and boiling water for me to steam because I'd have a lot of trouble breathing at night. And at the time I didn't know why, but I assume it's probably related to my neck. Also during that time, basically my life was just that I would lay in bed. We had blackout curtains, but it was still too bright. And so during that time we had very dark curtains, but it was still too bright. So I would wear an eye mask. I would wear earplugs because the sound of leaves rustling and birds and just the sound, I lived in the suburbs at that time, just the sound of cars going by or whatever would be incredibly overstimulating and painful for me. So I just, hi puppy, hello. So I would just wear an eye mask and earplugs all the time and lay in a dark room with the light off. That was pretty much my life. I really didn't do anything other than that. Then go to appointments and Simeon would come and visit me about once a month. Yeah, on a good day he would come and visit me and a good day meant I could get from my bed to the lounge room with help and I would just lay on the lounge room and he'd hold my hand and often we wouldn't even talk and it was just I'd have to lay flat on the couch and it was it was really bad also with balance often if I'm sitting up straight I will like fall and tip to one side or the other or sometimes backwards or forwards my hand eye coordination used to be good when I was a kid but now it's very very bad I'm not I don't want to say very very bad it's poor I also have weak arms and shoulders this could be to for a number of reasons but CCI would contribute probably so I occasionally feel like I have really heavy feet and really heavy legs and also I occasionally wake up or when I'm laying in bed I feel like my legs are in a different position to what they are and sometimes it feels like they're in a really weird position but they're actually completely normal. I also often have unexplained itching and crawling on my skin and under my skin. So I also have a lot of food sensitivities, histamine sensitivities, salicylate and mast cell disease and issues with my gut pots as well which can all actually be related to craniocervical instability but they could also be separate for me as well and be caused by my EDS. I have difficulty having bowel movements which could be from other things as well but contributed to CCI and I also urinate quite frequently with urgency which again could be caused by other things but contributed to by CCI. I feel that post-exertion malaise that could be again contributed by CCI but also by other things like chronic fatigue and EDS. I also get a tightness and squeezing down my esophagus and into my chest. I'm not sure what this is related to. I just had a little rest and now I'm back. So I also have heat intolerance and cold tolerance. I get very cold and really can't stand the heat. Also, I didn't know this was a symptom until I got diagnosed, but constantly coughing up mucus. I have a little bit of difficulty swallowing that comes more occasionally. I don't really have the really difficulties with swallowing that other people have. I do, however, have like, I will often choke on my own spit or choke on water and things like that. And I often get like what feels like a really tight ball in my throat here. And this part of my throat, I will often feel like is out of place and kind of have to move it like this. It's, it's really weird. I don't know what causes it. Also, when I swallow tablets, 
they will feel a lot bigger and I will often feel pain all the way down. I will often get times where I suddenly feel out of breath and will have to take really deep gasping breaths. Okay, so that is the bulk of my symptoms. Some symptoms that I don't have that other people do have is non-epileptic seizures. So I'm very grateful to have not have those. I have muscle cramps and spasms, but I don't have them to the extent that other people have them where some people can't even walk due to their CCI. Some people get really, really bad spasms, say in their spine, where their back totally contorts backwards. Some people have it. their legs are just constantly jumping or they're flailing or just constantly over and over again. Some people are paralyzed. And yeah, so I'm very lucky that I don't have some of those really scary symptoms. Some symptoms that I forgot are things like brain fog, nausea, fatigue and just pain like the pain is just really the worst thing if you're awake you're in pain and if you're asleep you're probably still in pain like I have had dreams about snakes biting my neck because I've just been in pain in my sleep that it goes into my dream and I've dreamt about a snake biting my neck and things like that so yeah just pain it's a lot of pain and it's pretty severe and that just really interferes with everything in your life because if Amaya no off so the camera is in a pot plant and it's kind of sunk but we're just going with it. Yeah so that pain if you are playing like trying to play a board game or a card game with your family especially if you have to look down or doing a puzzle or drawing or reading or whatever is just so painful that it really takes it away from it and within a few seconds to minutes it just gets too painful and the muscles get so tight that it's just doesn't even feel like it's worth doing so just doing little small things like that really really have to push through the pain and it really feels difficult to hold your head up my capacity is improved a lot from where it has been but it still remains my most disabling and debilitating symptom and yeah the one that increases my quality of life the most so we are looking into doing some treatments in the future to help it and I will keep you updated about that. I I mean, I've been doing things before now and I'll do a separate video about that. But I'll try and keep you guys updated on what works and what doesn't. For me, it might be different for you. But we're trying to stay as conservative as possible and avoid neurosurgery as long as possible. So I just want to thank you guys for sticking in with me here. Yeah, I knew this. I know this was... A really long video and I hope this will be helpful for some people in the future. Bye.